OK, so in this video, we are going to look at ratio. And there's three kind of key things that you need to be able to do with ratio. The first thing is you need to be able to simplify ratios. And then you need to be able to divide a quantity into a given ratio. And the last thing you need to be able to do is deal with questions when given the value of just some of the parts. OK, and they're the trickier little questions. But uh, the key thing when you do get a question is to identify which one of these it is. Are you dividing a full quantity into a given ratio or are you just given information about part of it? OK, so that's that's one of the key things you need to decipher. OK, let's start off with the simplifying ratios first. Okay, so let's try the first question. Uh, the ratio, is, you know it's a ratio when you have these two dots in the middle, OK? And we'll talk a little bit more now when we look at questions as to exactly what it means dividing something into a ratio. It's all to do with splitting it up into parts and proportions, OK? But when you see a ratio, it looks like this. And how you go about simplifying ratios is the same sort of idea uh, like with simplifying fractions. Um, in other words, just like with simplifying a fraction, if you had 4 over 8, top and bottom, and you want to simplify it or make it equivalent, you have to think of something that's going to go into both the top and the bottom. OK, you, you have to divide both the top and the bottom by the same thing. That's the key thing, that you do the same thing to the top and the bottom. Then you'll always get an equivalent fraction. It's the same ratio. As long as you do the same thing to each of the sides of the ratio notation, then you will also get an equivalent ratio and you can simplify it by doing the same thing, dividing both sides of that symbol by the same thing. So if I half each of those divide by two, I will get two is to four. And you can also divide by two again and one is to two. So you keep going as far as you can till you get that you can't go any further simplifying. You might have spotted straight away that rather than dividing by two and dividing by two twice, you could have divided by four because that would be the highest number that would go into both of those. And then, of course, you get straight to your simplified answer. One is to two. OK, but it doesn't matter if it takes you a few steps to get there as long as you just keep going until you can't go any further. Let's have a look at this one. Now, pause the video and try this one yourself if you feel confident. 14 is to 21. Can you think of a number that we can divide into both? Of course, we have to divide the same thing. So 14, uh, we could divide by 7 there. If you've spotted that both 14 and 21, the 7 times tables. And 14 divided by 7 is, of course, 2. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. And that's as far as we can go. 2 is to 3. Try this one. Pause the video. Here, if you've spotted. Uh, the highest number that will divide into both of those would actually be 10. OK, and 10 into 50 goes five times and 10 into 30 goes three times. Now, even if you have three ratios, again, your same principle applies. As long as you do the same thing to everything, then you're keeping the proportions the same. OK, so pause the video and try this one. So you might have spotted straight away that you could half everything there. So then you get fours to six is to ten. But remember, you, you, you may be able to keep going further. OK, so again, you could half everything again and you'd get two is to three is to five. And that's your final answer. That's as far as we can go. If you'd spotted at the start, you could have divided both of, uh, or everything by four. Then you'd have got straight to your answer. Two is to three is to five. So again, it doesn't matter if you're doing it in stages, as long as you go until you can't go any further. There's nothing then that you can divide into two and three and five, only one. I'm sure you'd only get two, three and five back. Again. Right, pause the video, try this one. Now, I don't know if you've spotted that with 18, 24 and 42, uh, they are all part of the six times tables. So if we divide everything by six, Doing the same thing to everything, that's the key. We get three is to four is to seven. And there we go. There's our final answer. Now, the very last one that I want to do with you is one that you want to be careful of. Put a little star here, OK? And that is if you had 50 cent is to one euro. What you have to be very careful here 
uh, when you're asked to simplify and you're given it like this is that if your units aren't the same, then when you go to simplify, your proportions won't be the same. So one of the key things you have to do if you spot, you, you know, that you haven't got the same units. I've got cent here and I've got euros here is you either get it all into euros or you get it all into cent before you do any attempt at simplifying. So the easiest thing for me to do here, I think, is to change everything to cent. Now I'm in a position where I can look to simplify and I'm going to divide both sides by 50 and I get one is to two. There we go. That is the correct simplified ratio. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, next part with ratios. And this is the most common type of question you'd get with ratios where you're given a quantity and you have to divide it into a given ratio. So here's a typical question. Divide 50 euro into the ratio seven is to three. Now, ratio is all to do with proportion and parts parts is a good word to use with this if you have the ratio seven is to three i want you to think of it as you've got seven parts is to three parts okay now the first thing you want to do then if this is your total money your total money is always going to equal your total parts so your total parts is 10, 10 parts all together, okay? So always put your total money equal to your total parts, okay? And the key thing then is if you want to figure out how much is seven parts and how much is three parts, is figure out what one part is first. Because when you know what one part is, it is very easy to then just multiply by seven to get seven parts or multiply by three to get three parts. The key thing to always look for is what is one part? But you have to start with what's equal and what's equal is if this is the total money you have, then it's got to equal your total parts. So there we go. 50 euros equal to 10 parts. Now, if you want to go from 10 parts to one part. What are you doing? Well, to get from 10 to one, you're dividing by 10 or you're dividing by itself. So you have to do the same thing to both sides. It is an equation, of course. So if that's divided by 10. That's going to be divided by 10. So 50 euros divided by 10 is 5 euros. So 5 euro is one part. So now for seven parts, it's going to be 5 euro times 7. And for three parts, it is going to be 5 euro times 3. So the final answer is 35 euros is to 15 euros. Is the 50 euros divided into 7 is to 3 ratio. And you can always double check that your 35 and your 15 does in fact add up to your 50 total. Okay, try this question. Now, if you feel confident after the last example, press pause and try this yourself. So this is dividing 450 euros in the ratio two is to three. So the first thing I want to think about is that is two parts is to three parts. How many parts is that all together? It is, of course, five parts in total. So since this is my total quantity, that's got to equal my total parts. So 450 euros is equal to five parts. Now, key thing, as always, if I can figure out what one part is, it's going to be really easy to get the two parts and the three parts. So to go from five to one, uh, what will you do to this side to get down to one? Well, five, you would divide by five. You're always going to be multiplying or dividing, never adding or subtracting. It's to do with proportions. They can only be multiplied or divided. OK, so five divided by itself is always what's going to give you one. Whatever number is there, if you want to get to one, you divide it by itself. Five divided by five is one. And of course, that means if we're going to divide uh, the right hand side by five, you're dividing the left hand side by five. So 450 divided by five is, of course, 90 euros. So there we go. 90 euros is one part. And now we want two parts and three parts. So let's do 90 euros times two to get the two parts and 90 euros times three to get the three parts. So that's going to be 180 euros is to 270. And there we go. Double check that that adds to make 450. And it does. Let's try this question. Last question of this type. Press pause. See how you get on with this one. So this time we have one part is to two parts is to four parts, okay? Now, don't let this throw you just because there's three parts to this ratio, if you like, okay? You're still going to do the very same thing. This is my total money. 
I'm going to equate it to my total parts. This time I have one and two and four, which is seven parts all together. So my total money must equal my total parts. So let's do that. 700 euros, therefore, is equal to seven parts. Remember, get one part and we've got already one of the answers and then it's easy to get the two parts and the four parts. How will you go from seven to one? Remember, divide by itself will always get you down to one. So seven divided by seven on the right hand side. If I'm dividing by seven on the right, I'm dividing by seven on the left. So there we go. 700 divided by seven is 100. So 100 euro is one part. Well, that's the first answer. And then two parts will be 100 times two is to four parts will be 100 times four. So 100 euros is to 200 euros is to 400 euros is that quantity in that ratio. Okay, so the last bit that usually comes up at ratio is, is when you have questions and you're given the value of just some of the parts. And it's not that this is particularly difficult, but it is that pupils miss how this type of question is different from the previous question. So that's what I really want to hone in on with the examples here to show you how you identify that you're dealing with this type of a question in comparison to the last types of questions. OK, so here's the question. A sum of money was divided into the ratio of fours to five. If the smaller share is 48 euros, what is the sum of money? Well, the smaller share, this is the key thing, the smaller share is 48. So which part is that? It's not the total money. We don't know what the sum of money is. That's exactly what we're being asked to find out. What was the sum of money, the total amount that you started off with? The smaller share is going to be the four parts. Do you see that? Now, that is what's equal to 48. Four parts is what's equal to 48. It's no longer the total parts that you're finding for the total money. Do you see the difference? The smaller share is 48, so four parts is 48 euros. So just like before, we want to find out one part. That is what's key. If four parts is 48, how would I get from four to one? Divide by itself, of course. Do the same then on the other side. 48 divided by four is 12 euro. So just like before, I've now figured out one part, and that's key. Now, if I want the sum of money, I want the total money. Now, how many parts then is the total money? Well, the total will be the four and the five parts together. So basically, I'm looking for nine parts. So if I know one part is 12, then all I need to do is multiply by nine, and I have got the total money, the total parts. OK, so let's try this question now. A sum of money is divided in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5. And if the largest part is 1,250, then how much is each person's share? So again, the sum of money we don't know. This is not the total money. Uh, it's just the largest part, which means it is this part here. That tells me that five parts is 1,250, okay? And from that then I can figure out what one part is. So how do I go from five to one? Well, we'll divide by five. Five divided by five is one, and you'll do the same on the other side. And of course you get 250 euros. So now that I know what one part is, that's this person's share. The next bit I need to figure out is how much three parts are. So to go from one part to three parts, of course, you'll times by three. So 250 times three is 750 euros. So the answer is 250 is obviously the smallest share. And then 750, the middle part, the three parts, and the five parts is, of course, 1,250. There's each person's share. OK, try this question. So pause the question, see how you get on and press play to watch the solution. So in a school, the ratio of girls to boys is four to five. If there are 364 girls, how many boys are there? And again, we know this is different. We don't have the total number of pupils in the school. 
Okay, so it's it's not the total we're given, we're just given part of it. We're given that there's 364 girls. And girls to boys, ratio always follows order. So if it's girl to boys explained in that way, that means the girl parts, the girls part is four parts and the boys parts is five parts, if that makes sense. So four to five is girls is to boys. Okay, the order follows the order is explained. So that means that this four parts represents the girls. So four parts is equal to 364 girls. And if I get what one part is, then uh, I'll be able to figure out how many boys there are. So how to go from four to one, you'll divide by four. If you do that on the left, you'll do that on the right. 364 divided by four is 91. So one part is 91 girls. I want how many boys, and the boys is represented by the five parts. So I now want to go from one part to five parts. How do you go from one to five? Well, you just times by five. So 91 times by five is 455. And that's how many boys there are.